Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with error of the wicked, fall from your own. In other words, you'll get to hear these messages. You'll get to see them live this new life of liberty they're professing. Don't let that move you. If you let that move you, you'll be the one that suffers. You'll be the one that loses. And here's how you keep it from happening, verse 18. This answers the question here momentarily, am I growing? He says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember chapter 2, verse 20, where he said the same thing? To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So growing in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus is a natural deterrent to being deceived by last day false teachers. But what's that mean? Here it is twofold in a nutshell. Number one, when you grow in the knowledge of, your, of, the, of the Lord Jesus, you grow in your knowledge of what he says. You grow in your knowledge of what he says. It's foolish to claim or to lean on the crutch of, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, but yet not know what the Bible says. See, what you don't know won't hurt you. What you don't know when it comes to this category may, may really hurt you. It may really hurt you. So you grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus when you grow in what you know about the Word. But then he also said this, grow in grace. What's that mean? That's the execution of what you know. You grow in your knowledge by learning what he said. You put it into practice. That's how you grow in grace. Let me, is it okay if I interpret the Bible with the Bible? Go to Titus chapter 2. I'm going to show you this morning. I'm going to let God be the commentator of his own word. So Peter said, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is how you protect yourself from last day false prophets and a last day false message, right? So when you get to Titus chapter 2, verse 11, say amen. amen. So we're talking about growing in grace. Well, let's see what's, what is grace. Verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Teaching us, here's what grace does. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly, the very things that they're saying you have liberty to indulge in. Grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and it teaches us this, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So the question of the message is what? Am I growing? So here's how you process that individually looking at your own life. Number one, ask yourself this question. If growing means I'm advancing in something, ask yourself this. According to the definition of verse 2, am I advancing in denying ungodliness? What's ungodliness? That which is not like God. Am I making progress in my life in that the older I get in the Lord, the more and more I deny that which is not like God? Number two, am I advancing in denying worldly lust? That is a lust that comes from the world to be like the world. If you want to know if you're growing, and listen, being a Christian, you're going to have to find your purpose for being and get your confidence for who you are in your identity in Jesus, not from the world. If you need the world's applause to make your blood pressure roll, you're going to really struggle as a believer. Because everything they approve, God's pretty much against. If they're patting us on the back as a church, that church is doing good, we're probably jacked up. We've probably got a silent mess. We ain't saying much if the world is saying we're doing our job. So he says, hey, if you don't know whether or not you're growing in grace, are you advancing in how you deny worldly lust? Now, when you do that, when you advance in denying ungodliness and worldly lust, you'll naturally advance in the following. You ready? He says we should live soberly, which means to have a sober mind. Righteously, which means to live like you're justified. 
and godly in a manner prescribed by the Lord.